Welcome to Short Answers. We take a topic and ask two short questions about it. This time we'll focus on savings and economic growth. A high savings rate, a high gross domestic savings rate, usually indicates a country's high potential to invest in capital. Here are the two questions. State two factors that affect the gross savings rate for a country. And question two, explain how an increase in gross savings might not necessarily lead to an increase in a country's growth rate. So what are the two factors that are many of many that can affect the growth savings rate for a country? Well, the gross savings rate is total savings accumulated by agents in the economy, households, businesses and government added together and expressed as a share of GDP. I've picked out two that I think are fundamental. One is the level of income per capita adjusted for purchasing power parity. For many lower and middle income countries, uh, there's a high level of extreme poverty and therefore the majority of households, for example, cannot afford to save. And uh, therefore the savings rate tends to be limited. Corporate profits in these industries also tended to be constrained by the size of the market, by the size of demand. So when real GNI per capita goes up, both people and businesses can afford to save more. And the, the government's own fiscal position, the budget balance of the government, is another key factor. So, for example, if the government's running a budget surplus, then it's taking in more tax than it's spending and therefore building up savings in the public sector, adding to gross national savings. Explain how a rise in gross savings might not necessarily lead to an increase in a country's growth rate. Well, this question hints at the well-understood Howard Domar growth model, which links an increase in gross savings to a big an increase in the capital stock. And therefore, if the capital stock increases, an increase in the country's trend growth rate, because workers and businesses have more capital to use. In the basic Howard Domar model, the rate of growth of GDP equals the savings ratio divided by the capital to output ratio. We have a separate video on the Howard Domar model on our YouTube site. But an increase in gross savings in the economy doesn't necessarily automatically cause a, cr a country to grow faster. First of all, it may be the case that there are significant weaknesses in the stock of human capital. So although workers may have more capital machinery, plant and equipment and tools to work with, there could be a significant time lag between that extra investment becoming available and an increase in labour productivity. People may not necessarily have the skills and the education and the aptitude to take full advantage, productive advantage, of the new capital available to them. A second point is that the financial system may not necessarily be able to channel the increase in household and corporate savings into allocating that money towards funding productive investments. So the capital markets and the bond markets, the banking system, may not be necessarily very efficient in allocating capital. This tends to be particularly true for countries with a high degree of corruption and also markets which aren't necessarily particularly sophisticated in handling um, finances. Stock markets and bond markets, for example, may be at a relatively low level of sophistication and development. The result can be that even if there's a high level of savings, it doesn't necessarily get channeled into productive investments. Here's a quick reminder of the Howard Doma model, where an increase in national savings, in theory, channels through to increased investment. As investment increases, the capital stock grows, and that, if it's productive, can add to national income per capita, which in turn increases people's incomes, which in turn allows people to save more. There's a virtuous circle here, which needs to be encouraged and enhanced. So that's the short answer on savings and growth.